So if you remember last time, we began with a situation where we had a circuit. A circuit is an connection of wires which are hooked up, um, usually to a voltage or to an amperage source. And we considered that circuit as electrons were moving from one side to the other through some kind of thing which would impede them. We called that a resistor. So last time we started circuits. Remember, a circuit looks something like this. You usually have a battery. Okay, here's a battery. And the battery is usually hooked up to some kind of a resistor. A resistor could be, for instance, a light bulb. Okay, and the light bulb has a filament in it. <laughs> and that filament's job is to take electrons which are trying to move through it and slow them down as best as possible. Battery has two components. Battery has a plus side and a minus side. Okay? Plus and the minus are relative to each other. So if I say that this is a 12 volt battery, for instance, then that means that this side is 12 volts higher than that side. A volt is any amount of energy per unit charge. <laughs> Alright, usually what we do is we'll hook the one side of the battery up to one side of the light bulb, and we'll hook the other side of the battery up to the other side of the light bulb. Okay, there are all these, this is a metal, right? A conductor is a metal. So it usually contains a lot of electrons. In a metal, those electrons are free to move. So we have a series of electrons, here's the electrons, which are all throughout the metal. If you hook up a battery, a battery is essentially a source of energy, and it can pull those electrons. We, some people like to say that there's a pressure, an electron pressure, that's pulling those electrons from one side to the other. You guys know that opposites attract from Coulomb's law before. So those electrons are going to get pulled through the path of least resistance, which in this case is through this light bulb, because electrons really don't like going through the air. So the electrons are getting pulled from one side of the battery to the other, and to do that they have to travel through this light bulb. Okay, well that's great. And so we've got the situation where they're being pulled through. Well, once they get to this point, we assume that these we assume that these have no resistance. That the wires have no resistance. Assume that the wires have no resistance. And we assume that the light bulb is all the resistance in the situation. all the resistance is located here, right in the light bulb. <laughs> and we pretend like, pretend like that's the only resistor in the entire circuit. These electrons are moving from one side around through the light bulb and to the other side of the battery. Once they hit the light bulb, they're going to start to bump into the other electrons and atoms and things and molecules in this thing. They're going to slow down. That's what we say resistance. They're being resisted by the, by the light bulb. <laughs> Alright, well they're going to slow down. And when they slow down, they're going to impact either elastically or inelastically with the electrons and molecules that are in here. And those any inelastic and elastic collisions are going to cause heat and in addition light. And so you're going to see a release of either heat or light, which is getting released. See? So heat and light are coming out of the light bulb. And that's generally what happens. All right. This situation is pretty hard to draw, right? You wouldn't want to draw this every single time. And what if we have multiple light bulbs, right? It could get very complicated. So what we do instead of drawing this situation every time is electricians and physicists and engineers have come up with what's a standard way to draw a circuit just like this. A battery, which took me probably five seconds to draw, now takes me a half a second to draw. That's a battery. There's a big line followed by a little line. The big line represents the positive pole. The little line represents the negative pole. Every time you draw a wire, even though wires in general are not straight lines, we draw them as straight lines. So that's a wire, 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 that's a wire. Okay, there's some wires. Every time you want to draw any kind of resistor, a light bulb is a resistor. If you're trying to talk about the equivalent resistance in the wires, that could be a resistor. If you're trying to talk about a ceramic resistor or whatever it might be, a heating element on your stove, whatever it is. Those are all resistors. We pretend like they are, they essentially look just like this little filament on the light bulb. They're a zigzaggy line, something like that. Okay, that is a resistor. And we usually label this V, and we usually label this R. The current that goes through, we label I. Right? And I is the amount of charge which is passing through this thing every second, or the number of coulombs that pass a given point every second. Uh, remember that voltage is measured in units of volts. I is measured in units of amps, and R is measured in units of ohms. So this is measured in units of volts, this is measured in units of amps, and this is measured in units of ohms. Remember, ohms have that funky omega symbol. Okay? You guys alright with that? Excellent. Okay, so we've got that situation. Let's do an example. Here's an example. 
We have a situation where we have, let's say, a car battery. Car battery is 12 volts. And we're going to hook a car battery up to, let's say, a 200 ohm resistor. There's my resistor. Remember, we draw all of our wires as straight lines. This is a 200 ohm resistor. That is a 12 volt battery. And I want to find what is the current going through that circuit. Remember, this is the plus and this is the minus. Okay, a second ago, if you'll remember, I told you right here that we have these electrons, and the electrons are being pulled from one side to the other side. Right? But now I'm labeling the current right here, I, and I'm saying that the current is going around from the plus to the minus side. This is for actually a historical reason. A long time ago, when people were first studying electricity and circuits, they used to think that the things that carried charge were actually positive charges, not negative charges. In other words, they used to think electrons were positive charges. And that <coughs> really the positive charges were moving from the plus to the minus. Well, time went on and they realized that that wasn't true, but it kind of stuck. And so we've assumed that positive charges are going from the positive side to the negative side since electricity has been discovered. And so that's kind of been the notation that's stuck. What you can think about is the electrons are really moving from this side to this side, but every time the electron moves, it leaves a little bit of a hole, and that hole can be treated like a positive charge. Um, actually, they're actually called holes in uh, quantum mechanics and physics. Um, we pretend like there's a little positive void that's moving from here to there. Either way, you know that the electrons are moving around like this, and that we assume that the current is going around like that. So it's just a bit of notation. If you remember from last time, we used Ohm's law to figure out what the current was and what the voltages were in this particular situation. So we're going to go to Ohm's law. Okay, Ohm's law relates the voltage drop across a resistor to the current and the resistance in that resistor. So the voltage drop across a resistor is related to the current and the resistance in the resistor. Okay, voltage equals current times resistance. And we're looking for the current, so let's go ahead and solve for that. It should be pretty easy for you guys now. I divided by R, V, sorry, I equals V divided by R. V is equal to 12 volts. R is equal to 200 ohms. And you should get, if you put that in the calculator, 0.6 volts per ohms, or the units of current are called amps. All right? Okay, so last time, we did an example where we calculated the current moving through a particular circuit. We said that we had a 12 volt voltage source, like a battery moving through a 200 ohm resistor, which could be a light bulb, for instance. <laughs> and we wanted to figure out how many coulombs per second, or how many amps, were moving through that circuit. So we used Ohm's law, which relates the voltage to the current, and they, the voltage to the current are directly proportional. The constant is called the resistance, R. And that R was given. And we found that the current was 0.06 amps. Ohm's law only works for one light bulb at a time. You can only take care of one light bulb at a time, or at least one the equivalent of one light bulb at a time. So in general this isn't very practical because usually when you have a voltage source of any kind like a generator or a power plant or a car battery you want to hook up more than one thing to it at a time otherwise you have to have a different battery for every single thing you want to do. So naturally this leads us to figure out how do we deal with multiple sources or sorry multiple things and happening all at one time. That's where we're going next. So let's keep that in mind. And let's look at a situation which is very similar to this, but we're going to make one slight alteration. We're going to take an example where instead of having just one, we're going to have multiple. Let's say that we have the same 12 volt source, and we hook up a 200 ohm resistor. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take another 200 ohm resistor, and I'm going to put that in what we call series with that 200 ohm resistor. Okay. So those two are in series. What does series mean? Series means that you can't go from one side of the circuit all the way back around to the other side. Remember, this is positive and negative. The electrons can't go from one side all the, all the way to the other side without going through every single one in between. So if you're trying to go from one to from beginning to end, you can't get from beginning to end without going through both of these. That means that they're in series. Let's go ahead and write that down. These are called series. The definition of series means you cannot go from beginning to end without going through every one in 
on the queen. In other words, those resistors are in series if you have to go through every single opening to get through there. Okay? Let's move this out of the way for a second. We'll bring it back. Okay, so what do we do with this? Well, Ohm's Law only deals with one light bulb at a time, or one resistor at a time. So we need to get this to look like a one resistor problem. This needs to look something like this. Because that's the only thing we know how to deal with. So we need to create what's called the equivalent resistance. This would be called REQ. For sake of argument, let's call this R1, and let's call this R2. Okay? And we need to figure out what's this. Why did I call it REQ? REQ stands for the equivalent resistance. And let's get a definition for that really quick. The equivalent resistance is the resistance of a single resistor designed to have the exact same resistance as multiple resistors. In other words, if I'm going to replace these two resistors with one big resistor, we call that resistor equivalent, REQ. If I'm going to replace those two uh, little resistors with one big resistor, what should that resistor be? Remember, this is still 12 volts, sorry. That's still 12 volts. So think about it for a second. What do you think that resistance should be? Okay, well your brain says, this is 200, that's 200, I have two 200, so my guess is that it's 400, 400 ohms. And if that's the case, you would be right. The rule for equivalent resistance, yeah, let's bring this up here, rule for equivalent resistance, if they're in what we call series, which is what I just explained, so if they're in series, the rule for equivalent resistance is the following. We take to find the equivalent resistance, we take the first one, we add the second one, we add the third one, if there is one, we add the fourth one, dot, 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 forever and ever, however many there are. So in this case, there are two. There are two, exactly two resistors, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take R1 and R2, add those two together, and we should get 400 ohms. So let's do that. The equivalent resistance here, our equivalent, let me move this out of the way, our equivalent resistance is going to be the following, REQ equals 200 ohms plus 200 ohms, and we get 400 ohms. Okay, so this, what does that tell us? This circuit, well that's 12 volts, this was 200 ohms, this was 200 ohms, is exactly equivalent to this circuit where I have a 12 volt, 12 volt voltage source, and I have one resistor there, and that resistor is now one big resistor, 400 ohms. These two are identical. Well, we know how to find the current in this circuit, right? So now we can figure out what that is. So what do we do? We go to Ohm's Law, B equals IR, and now this R is the R in this circuit, and we call that R, R equivalent. That's 400 ohms. This is R equivalent. Okay, and we're gonna solve for I. So I is equal to V divided by R, in this case R equivalent, and that's going to be 12 volts divided by 400 ohms. All right, remember before, when we did this example, we came out with 0 0.06 amps was how much charge per second was passing through this resistor. Where's the resistor? It was passing through this resistor right here. That's how much charge per second was it passing through one resistor. Now we doubled those resistors. We added two of them. And let's see what happens to the amps when we're done. Let's see what happens to the current when we're done. 12 divided by 400, you should get 0 0.03 amps. You notice that this is half as much, right? Here we had 0 0.06, now we have 0 0.03. We have one half as much current because as we go and we add more resistors to this, we're making it more difficult for the current to move through. And so there's going to be less current that gets through per second. Okay, that's by adding those in series. So let's do a couple examples. All right, so here's one more example. This will be a series example. Let's say that we have a 50 volt voltage source. 
and we take a 50 volt voltage source and we attach a series of resistors to it. There's one resistor, there's another resistor, sorry, there's another resistor, And if you look at these uh, resistors, they might look like they're very confusing because they're going in all kinds of different directions. But really, that's not really the case. You have, if you start here at the positive end of the terminal, and you try to move to the negative end of the battery terminal, you have to go through literally every single resistor in between. So let's say that this is, for sake of argument, 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 ohm, 4 ohm, 5 ohm, and 6 ohm. Okay, 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 ohm, 4 ohm, 5 ohm, 6 ohm. We have six resistors. These resistors are in series, because if I'm an electron and I'm trying to move from here all the way back around through here, or if I'm my quote unquote hole, and I'm trying to move from here all the way around through here, right? we have to go through every single resistor in between. This one, right? there's no way to get from here to here without going through each single resistor. So these are in series. Okay. Now what we want to do is find I going through the circuit. That's what the question is asking for. Okay, so now our purpose is to find I in the entire circuit. Okay, this uh, current is going to be found by using Ohm's law. So we're going to have to use Ohm's law, V equals IR. We're going to have to solve for I. But in order to do that, Ohm's law only deals with one with one circuit with one resistor at a time. So we need to pretend like there's only one resistor here, but really there's six. So we need to fix that. We need what's called R equivalent. All right, R equivalent for series, the rule is that you take R equivalent is given by R1 plus R2 plus, plus in this case, R6. So we're gonna add R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, and R6 together. And we're gonna get R equivalent. So R equivalent is going to be what? One ohm plus two ohms plus three ohms plus four ohms plus 5 ohms, plus 6 ohms, right? 1 plus 2 makes 3, 3 plus 3 makes 6, 6 plus 4 makes 10, 10 plus 5 makes 15, and 15 plus 6 makes 21 ohms. Let's just double check our math really quick. 6, 10, 15, 21, okay, 21 ohms. So if we were to redraw the circuit, and you don't have to redraw it every time if you can see it, but just for right now we will. If we were to redraw the circuit, this would be like we had a 50 volt voltage source right here. Remember, this is the positive, that's the negative. And then we have one resistor, one big resistor. And that resistor has resistance 21 ohms. These two circuits, sorry, these two circuits are equivalent. Top one and the bottom. Okay? They're exactly the same circuit, as far as current goes, at least. Okay, and now the rest of it's pretty easy. We take V equals IR, and this R is R equivalent. So I is equal to V divided by R. And we plug that in, that's 50 volts divided by 21 ohms, All right? And if you throw that in the calculator, let's grab the calculator. If you throw that in the calculator, we should have 50 volts divided by 21 ohms. You get 2.38 units of current are amps, and we are done. You just figured out how many amps are in this particular circuit. All right, well, let's look at one more example. Let's say that I have a 10 volt voltage source and I take two resistors. Each of them will say is five ohms. Okay, here's five ohms, here's five ohms. All right, and then I hook those back up to the battery. Okay, so we've got these two resistors. By now you should know that those resistors are in series. Remember, series means that it can't go from one side to the other without going through both resistors in between. Okay, so these have to be in series. An electron starting here has to go through both of these resistors. Actually, the electron would be starting over here. But you get the idea. The electron has to go through both resistors at the same time. And if we wanted to find the current in this circuit, what would we do? Well, we need to use Ohm's law. And we're going to solve for I. All right, but remember, this R has to be the R of one resistor. And we have two resistors. So we have to find what's called the equivalent resistance. Okay, and then this would become the equivalent resistance. So before we get this R, we need to actually go back and find that equivalent resistance. So let's do that really quick. You guys know that this is a series circuit. So to find the equivalent resistance, it's pretty quick, right? We have five ohms plus five ohms gives us 10 ohms. 
Okay, so now we're going to use this. We know that I is equal to the voltage would be 10 volts divided by 10 ohms, and you get 10 divided by 10 should give you one volt per ohm or one amp. Okay, excellent. Hold on to that for a minute. Let's look at another example, but I'm going to alter the way that I have these set up now. So instead of having them set up one after another so that the electrons have to go through both series circuit uh, resistors in order to get to the other side, <coughs> I'm going to set them up a little bit differently. So this is before. I'm going to try to lay them side by side here. This is before. Now I'm going to set them up in what's called parallel. I'm going to take these two, exact same situation. So here's a 10 volt battery. I'm going to take one resistor and I'm going to attach a wire. And I'm going to use a splitter to split that wire into two and attach that one like this. Okay? Then I'm going to take that same splitter and I'm going to split that one over here and I'm going to attach this one like this. Okay? And so the current is kind of coming in here and then it has an option to split either to the up or to the down resistor. And each one of these will be 5 ohms again. Okay? So 5 ohms on top, 5 ohms on bottom. Okay, before you notice, we have an, uh, an, a current of one amp, right? That's going through this whole situation. So actually that current is right here, okay? <laughs> now let's figure out what the current going into that situation is in, uh, with these two, with um, them in parallel. It's gonna be a little bit different because it's kind of like you've opened up multiple doors, multiple paths for this to go through, All right? The rule for parallel, first of all, let's define what parallel means. We say that these are in parallel. What does that mean? It means if current can bypass one resistor by going through another, then those two resistors are in parallel. Okay? So one more time. Parallel is if you choose to go through one resistor, the other resistor gets completely left out of the situation, gets completely left out of the loop. So that would be a parallel circuit. These two are said to be in parallel with each other. A lot of people get confused by this. They think, oh, well, these two are parallel, literally, like geometrically, parallel to each other. And so they say, because they're parallel, that means that they are in parallel with one another. That's not actually true, because if you look at this circuit, right, these two resistors, are geometrically parallel to each other, but if you look at them, to go from one side to the other, you have to go through every single resistor between. These are not in parallel, these are in series. This is not parallel, okay? Don't confuse the geometric version of parallel with the actual version of parallel. All right, so what's the rule? Let's try to find the current in the above circuit. I equals question mark, same as right here. Okay, so this is the exact same problem as before. We need to use Ohm's law. and solve for I. But remember, Ohm's law only applies to one resistor circuit. So we need to get this into what's called the equivalent resistance. Okay? And we're gonna find the equivalent resistance now. So, find the equivalent resistance. The rule for parallel circuits. Remember, the rule for series circuits was you just add one to the other. Well, that's not the case in parallel circuits. For parallel circuits, one over the equivalent resistance. This is where it gets confusing. 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor plus however many resistors you have. Okay, I'm going to write this rule down and then we're going to use it and it'll make a lot more sense. A lot of people get confused by this. When we're done, we're not going to have solved for the resistance. We're going to solve for 1 over the resistance. So if we want to get the resistance, we have to flip it. So for instance, if we get a resistance of 2, sorry, if we get an answer on the right side of this equation of 2, when we're done, if we get that, we have to flip it. So our resistance is going to be one half, one over two. Okay, so let's try to find the equivalent resistance in this particular circuit. So in the circuit we had, I'm sorry, in the circuit that we had, we're looking at two 5 ohm resistors. Sorry, let me get this situated. Two 5 ohm resistors. Okay, so we want to find the equivalent resistance. Our equation says 1 over REQ is equal to 1 over 5 ohms plus 1 over 5 ohms. Okay, do not be the person who says 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 gives me 1 over 10 and we're done. That is wrong. This is not equal to 1 over 10. Bad, very bad. Okay, if you want to find the equivalent resistance, you have to add fractions. When you have to add fractions, you add the numerators, not the denominators. So this is the same thing as 1 plus 1 divided by 5. 
1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 is 2 over 5. This is 2 over 5. R E Q. Um, you might want to convert this into a decimal. Might make your life a little bit easier. So that's 0 0.4. Alright, like I said, now we've solved for 1 over R E Q. We haven't solved for R E Q. So in order to get R E Q, we have to flip both sides. So this implies that R E Q is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.4. And 1 divided by 0 0.4 should give me. I believe it's 2.5. Okay? Alright, that's going to be in units of ohms. Alright, so we have 2.5 ohm resistance. This is interesting. Look, we have a 5 ohm resistor, a 5 ohm resistor. When we attach them together, we get a 2.5 ohm equivalent resistance. So if we were to redraw the circuit, like I said, you don't have to redraw it every time, but let's just redraw it for fun. If we were to redraw the circuit, it's like we have one resistor right here an equivalent resistor of 2.5 ohms. Well, that's weird. We added two 5 ohm resistors together and we got a 2.5 ohm resistor. Before, when we were doing series, remember we added two 5 ohms in series and we ended up with an equivalent resistance of 10 ohms. It doubled. Now we add two 5 ohms together and we end up with half of it. All right, so we're left to REQ and we're looking for what? We're looking for the current. So let's go back to Ohm's Law. Remember, B equals I R equivalent. And we're going to solve for I. I is equal to V divided by R equivalent, which gives us an equivalent, or sorry, a current going through the entire circuit of 10 volts divided by 2.5 ohms, which is 4 amps. Okay? Okay, let's compare really quick. Go back to the series circuit. So this 4 amps. In the series circuit, we added 2 together and we got 1 amp. In the parallel circuit, we added the two together and we got four amps. So this quadrupled the amount of current that was going through. Okay? The mnemonic that's used is current always follows the path of least resistance. So in this case, by adding these two together, by taking two in parallel, right, we made this, it's like we made a wider resistor and thus decreased the equivalent resistance here. And here it's like we made a longer resistor, which increased the resistance here. Longer resistors have higher resistance, wider resistors have lower resistance. And so by decreasing the resistance, we ended up with a larger current, okay? One amp raised to four amps by just changing the orientation of those two. Okay, so we'll do some examples with this in one second. All right, so let's do some examples of parallel circuits. So let's take a situation where we have two resistors in parallel. Now remember, in parallel in the series and parallel circuit sense doesn't mean the same thing as in parallel as in two lines being in parallel. So let's look at a situation where the resistors aren't necessarily parallel to each other, but they are still in parallel. So here's one resistor. Here's the other resistor. Okay. These two resistors geometrically are not parallel to each other. They're perpendicular. But if you look, if you start here, let's say that this is 10 volts. And let's say that this one is 5 ohms. And we'll say that this one is, I don't know, 50 ohms. For sake of argument. Okay, 5 and 50. If you look at these two resistors, right, this resistor, if you go through, let's say you're starting out from right here and you're trying to find the current. If the current is going through this side, it can get all the way around back to the battery without ever going through this one. Right? Remember, current is electrons that are moving. They're actually moving this way. Current is electrons that are moving around a circuit. Well, those electrons don't want to fight against themselves. Remember, opposites attract and like charges repel. So <laughs> if you have an electron which is moving, let's say, this way, and it decides to go through this uh, resistor, it doesn't want to turn around and go back here and then fight against the other electrons again. It's not going to do that. It's more likely that this electron is going to go through here and come back around this way. Okay, the current's going to follow the path of least resistance. It doesn't like to fight against itself. So the current goes through here. All right, if it decides to go this way, it doesn't have to go through this one. If it decides to go this way, it doesn't have to go through that one. These two are in parallel, despite not being parallel, like actually parallel, as in the sense that the two lines can be parallel. Okay? These two things aren't necessarily the same thing. So we're going to use our parallel rule. All right, we're finding the current that's flowing into the circuit. Actually, what's going to happen is once it gets here, the current's going to split. And you're going to have some of the current go this way and some of the current go this way. More current will go toward the smaller resistor than the bigger resistor because it's easier to flow this way. But we're not going to deal with that for right now. For right now, all I want to know is what is the total current that goes into the system? All right, so what are we going to do? We want to find the current. 
right? We're going to use Ohm's law, so V equals IR. And remember that this R has to be R equivalent if we're dealing with more than one resistor. So our job now is to find R equivalent. The rule for parallel circuits, 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over the first one. So let's say this is the first one, 5 ohms, plus 1 over the second one, 50 ohms. Okay, two things you could do now. You could say, okay, 1 over 5 is approximately uh, 0 0.2, and you could say 1 over 50 is approximately 0 0.02, and you could work from there. Or you could multiply this one by 10 on top and bottom and add, up, add the fractions together to make this 11 over 50. But whatever is easiest for you. Sometimes the decimals are easier, so let's deal with that. This gives me 0 0.22. Okay, so 1 over R equivalent is equal to 0 0.22. R equivalent then is 1 over 0 0.22. Remember, we didn't solve for R equivalent here. We solved for 1 over R equivalent. So when we're done, we have to flip. So we've flipped both sides of this equation. Okay, so 1 divided by 0 0.22, if you throw that in our calculator, 1 divided by 0 0.22, we end up with 4.545, just for easy uh, rounding. Okay, the units for resistance are ohms. Remember, the units for resistance are ohms. Now that we have that, we can use that to calculate the current. We go back to Ohm's law, V equals IR, and remember this is our equivalent, and we solve for I. When you solve uh, for I, you divide by R on both sides. We end up with I equals V divided by R equivalent. Okay. That's going to give us V, which is 10 volts, divided by 4.545 ohms. A volt per ohm is the same thing as an amp, remember. So 10, sorry, 10 divided by 4.545 gives me 2.20 amps is what our final answer is, 2.20 amps, okay? And we've just completed a circuit in parallel.